asking yourself, what is this girl saying? She is cutting silver with a Cricut Explore Air. And I can barely cut chipboard with my Cricut Explore Air. But the cool thing is that I'm not lying. I'm not clickbaiting you. You really can do this. Um, it's not exactly what you think but it's super fun and it's super cool and anyone can do it. And there's not a lot of information out there about it. So I wanted to come on here and show you how you can make your own silver jewelry or copper or bronze or gold or anything with the Cricut Explorer here. Today, the project is going to be a pair of earrings. The secret ingredient to do silver jewelry with your Cricut Explorer is silver clay. This is the kind that I have. I'm going to show you all of the stuff that you need today aside from this because you're going to need a mix of clay material, jewelry making material, and Cricut material. So I'm going to show you how to draw out your design Put it in your computer just using your phone and your computer. You don't need anything else. Um, you're gonna be able to take your design, put it into Cricut, make it into metal, and then from metal it's gonna be jewelry and it's gonna be awesome. And so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take your design and make it into jewelry. If you haven't already, click subscribe, stick around. We're gonna be making lots of videos in the future and I don't know what they'll be on. Probably more of this because this is super fun and I want to see what else I can make with this. So click the like button on this video. That really helps me out and click subscribe and hang out and wait for my next video to come out because who knows what that will be on. I don't know. It will be on something completely random like this is. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is go get your phone and draw out your design here. So this is what I want each earring to look like. This is what I want the Cricut to cut out. Go take a picture of the piece of paper. So just take a picture, try and get the light pretty even. And once you do that, you can go to the picture, edit it, um, go to, this is a Galaxy, nine so whatever your phone is and however you edit you can just crop it and my image is obviously not perfect it is a drawing and yours will be too I mean yours is probably better than mine but you just go to your settings where you can change the exposure go to contrast raise the contrast all the way up and now it already starting to look a lot better and then go to saturation and lower the saturation all the way down. So once you have the saturation all the way down and the contrast all the way up, it'll be a lot easier for the Cricut program to identify what you wanna cut out. And we can edit this later. So I have like a little part in the corner that I'm probably gonna to wanna to erase and you can do that through Cricut or through your computer. So you just need to save that once you save that, you can email this to yourself and go to the computer. Okay, so once you're on your computer and um, you've sent yourself the design, you can just send it to your email, open it up. This is my design. I am going to fill in the little white specks that are in the black. This is just the Windows Photo Viewer. I'm just going to go to Draw, click Colors Black, and just fill it in. I don't know if the Cricut really, the Cricut program is going to pick this up when it goes to make the cut file, but I just want to make sure that that's not going to be an issue later on. Um, I'm not going to do everything, I'm just going to do some of it. And you can even edit your design at this point. Um, you can add white and just go ahead and make maybe another um, triangle here if you want. Um, so you can really do anything with this. Um, I'm going to make that triangle a little bit bigger, see if that comes out okay. So you can do whatever you want with this, you can just make a whole new design if you want. I think that's going to come out really cool. 
and I'm going to uh, the things that I want to erase I'm going to do within Cricut so this is done now I'm going to go ahead and save this I'm going to go save it as earring I already have one on my computer so I'm going to save it as earring too click save you can open up your Cricut Design Studio now. Open, you can click New Canvas. Go ahead and go to Upload. Once you're in Upload, you can click Upload Image, Browse, go to your file. Once you've clicked your file, I click Simple. So go ahead, what you're gonna do is erase the background and all the things that you don't want cut. So now you're on your Select and Erase. You can click the background now, it will erase it. Click in between um, all the little holes that you don't want um, in your design. So there you go. And I still see some specs and that I'm going to erase. You can click erase. Go ahead and erase the things that you see. You can smooth stuff out. I'm not going to really worry about the small things. I just want to kind of make a rough a little it's not gonna really show up that much when it cuts it and I'm going to be um, sanding it down and filing it down so I can make it as smooth as I want after the fact so it really doesn't matter um, go ahead and click continue you are now done with this you're gonna want to save this as a cut file save and you can insert that into your canvas and now that we're done here, I'm gonna save this and I will show you how to roll out the clay. Okay, so this is how you're gonna roll out the clay in order to put it through the Cricut. You're gonna want it super thin. You're gonna need a deck of cards. You're gonna to want to make this one three cards thick. So you're gonna do three cards on one side and three cards on the other side. Some people tape this together just so that they always know that they could just reach for it. Um, but I enjoy having a deck of cards, so I'm not gonna tape my cards together. So once you have this, you just make sure that there are three on each side and put them on either side, open up your clay. Make sure your hands are really clean for this because you don't want any um, anything to get into your clay. So make sure your cats are put away because you don't want cat hair getting in your way. Even though when you burn it later, when you fire the clay, it will burn out, but it could leave an imprint in your clay and that is not something that you want. Once you get your clay out of your package, this is how much 50 grams gives you. It's actually a pretty big lump of clay. You can do a lot with this. I'm only gonna roll out some of it just so that I can do um, my two earrings. So I'm just gonna put it, this is a clean table and it doesn't have any sort of imprint on it. This stuff will take um, texture really well. So you can make a lot of cool stuff with it, but you have to be really careful on what surface you put it on. It's also pretty sticky, so if it starts to get sticky, you can put some um, oil or lavender oil or any sort of oil just on um, your surfaces just so that it doesn't stick too much. Okay, so once you take your clay out of the package, you are going to want to roll it into a bowl. And right now the clay is wet. So it's easy to move around. It's not wet in the sense that it's, I guess, um, like liquidy, but it's wet in the sense that it's it's able to be moved and kind of manipulated just like clay is. So you're gonna want to kind of move it around. If it gets a little dry, you can add a tiny bit of water to it. You can use your paintbrush to put the water onto the clay. Just a tiny bit, you're not gonna want a lot. You just wanna kind of rehydrate it. It, it gets pretty, pretty dry, pretty quick. So just a little bit of water does the trick. And just roll it into a ball. Take your 
roller and start rolling it out. Only roll it where the cards are, otherwise it's going to get too thin in parts. So make sure you're always on the cards at all times on both sides. Once you're done with your piece of clay, just set it off to the side for a little bit. You're going to want to make sure that you get all the little pieces of clay off the table because that is just silver. So you want to make sure you save all of the silver that you have. And I'm going to put mine back in that plastic bag. Actually, I'm going to put mine... Okay. And I'm just going to put mine in that I have that is airtight. So I made my design a little bit smaller just so that it will fit on the material that I have. Um, this should be good. It might cut the tape just a little bit, but it, it should be fine. Um, now I put my um, material between one and four. So this is where I'm going to put it. I want to attach these and I'll click make it. I'm gonna move them again between one and four. So that's good. Go ahead and click continue. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. The material that I have seen in one of the videos that Kim made looks like she used Cardstock Plus. Somebody else said that she told them to use leather. Um, there's a few different types of leather in custom that you can use. Um, there's like genuine and thin and I'm not really sure which one cuts the best out of those. I did use Genuine and it cut a little bit too deep and it went through my plastic, which really didn't help when I was trying to um, catch all the little bits. It just went right through. So I'm gonna use Cardstock Plus because that did work for me when I did this um, the last time. So we're gonna do that. It doesn't cut all the way through and you're gonna see it, for some of it it will, but for most of it you're going to use um, a pick uh, to really clean out and push out the rest of it. And the next thing that you want to do is edit your tools and click deep point blade even though I'm on a uh, Cricut Air 2 and I'm using a deep cut blade you still want to make sure that it knows that you're using a deep blade. So now I'm going to put the glue onto my clay and load it into the Cricut. Okay so once your clay is out of the oven it's going to be um, flexible but you don't want to um, bend it too much but it's very very dry so you're gonna want to put this now onto your mat once the clay starts to cut there are gonna be little pieces of silver that fall off and you're gonna brush it off with a brush but you don't want it to stick to the mat itself because it is really really hard to get off you can see it happened to me before and I still can't get that off. So, um, make sure that you have plastic underneath your material. 
Um, just put it, I'm gonna put mine in between the one and the four, just so I know where um, to cut and where to put my images. I'm gonna use my masking tape to make sure that it is perfectly down on the material. Okay, so now is where Kim's clay stay comes into play. And this is gonna really make for a cleaner cut. Um, at least that's what Kim says. So I did actually do this without it once and I did see um, a slight difference in the cut. Um, I just feel better using this. So it's really easy. You just put a little bit onto the clay and you wanna do this really fast. And once it's on the clay, you use a paintbrush to put it over where your um, design is going to be. You don't want it to dry. It dries really fast, so you want to do it pretty quickly. It smells really good. I think she put like essential oils in this. And Kim's clay stay is used if you want to attach two clay pieces together before you fire it. Um, so if there is, um, if your piece has two, so let's say uh, there's um, the top of the ring and the base and you, um, it's kind of like the solder as you, I guess, say, um, that would join these two pieces together. So you would just attach those two pieces with the clay stay and fire it and it would turn out good. So once your glue is dry, the first thing that you wanna do is push your star wheels all the way to the right. You can load in your mat and press the load button. Make sure it goes all the way in. And press cut. While it's cutting, you can brush away any loose clay to the side just so that you can see your design better and also so that it gets out of the way of the blade. actually cut really well actually and the pieces are just falling out so cardstock plus worked really well with a three card thick piece of this flex clay um, but like I said like it doesn't cut all the way through on all the pieces so we are going to come in with the pick now and just make sure it comes out cleanly okay so now we're gonna push out the rest of the design and the best part about metal clay is that you can always rehydrate it so even though this is dry you could just mix it with a little bit of water and or grind it up and then mix it with a little bit of water and it becomes clay again it's it's awesome so all you have to do is just kind of push in where your line is not going all the way through. And it really pops out. So you can even just kind of wiggle it a little bit. Just be gentle with it if you have thinner, uh, thinner lines of clay.
So I'm just going with my pick along the line that I cut. And now all this extra clay can just be ground up and you add a little bit of water and you can um, make it right back into regular clay again. So I just put that in a plastic bag for later. And now all my pieces are here. And just kind of push out most of these. So there you have it, our two earrings. I'm going to clean these up a little bit with some files. Okay, so now um, is the time that I'm going to fire my clay. I use a butane torch. Um, there are different limitations on using um, butane torches. I will list them on the screen. And um, I'm gonna do one piece at a time. I have dimmed the lights because it's really important that you focus on the color of the piece while it's being fired. You're really looking for um, the piece to get to a peachy glow. Um, it's kind of like a salmon color. Once it gets to that salmon color, the size of my piece, it would be about a minute um, to a minute and a half at that color. Uh, for it to fully fire. Um, I'm gonna do them separate just because it's easier for me to um, keep the fire on one rather than both of them. So I'm just gonna push it to the side for a second. So we're gonna turn on our flame. You wanna make sure that you have a fully loaded butane torch for this. So I don't want a super uh, giant flame. I just want it to kind of be pretty small so that I can focus it around the areas that I want. The first thing that's gonna happen is that the binder is gonna burn off so there will be a flame. So you don't wanna inhale that. You wanna work with completely dry clay, otherwise it could literally explode. Once the binder completely burns off, this is when you start looking for the color. And your piece will shrink about 15%, so you see it curling there. That's fine, it will uh, get itself to be flat again. So it does that on its own. So that peachy color I'm starting to see now. And now I'm gonna uh, start my timer. I'm gonna go for another minute. You can't really uh, over torch your piece as long as it doesn't look shiny at any point. If it starts to look shiny on a certain area, that means that you are starting to melt it. So you just kind of want to um, just keep your piece pretty pink 
for about a minute and if it starts to look shiny just pull back a little bit just keep your torch moving that's the best way to not melt your piece Okay, now I'm gonna do my other piece. The binder will burn off first. Have your window open for sure. Okay, the binder's completely burned off on this side now. And it's starting to curl and turn that color. It will fix itself. Okay, and that's it. Just turn off your butane torch. Let that cool completely. Once it cools completely, then we can quench it in water. Okay, so one of the best ways to tell that your piece is done now is that it will sound like metal. Like legitimately, it is now metal. Um, it feels like metal. It is like feels heavier. Um, and now the only thing left to do is to sand them and make them polished and turn them into earrings. Okay, so there's really only one step left. Um, beside polishing, we're just gonna sand it. And this is really where the magic happens. It's when um, your clay piece really just, it makes sense now. It's gonna look metal, finally. Um, this entire time it's looked like clay and it still looks like clay but finally your clay piece is gonna look like what it is, which is a piece of silver. So um, what you wanna, wanna do is start with a 400 grit. Um, if you have 200 grit, that's really what you should start with. I have 400 grit. Um, so this takes a little while. Basically you're gonna wanna sand off all of the mat on uh, both sides and you can really put <laughs> put your strength into it and it takes a little while um, once you are done with your 400 grit it's gonna leave marks um, really small marks but it will leave marks so then you're gonna want to get rid of those marks with 600 grit um, once you do 600 grit you could stop there really and just go ahead and polish it uh, you can go ahead and, and do higher than that 800 grit or 1200 1000 um, but there's really no need unless you're particular and you really don't like the marks that it leaves. For now, just do 200 if you have it, 400 and then 600. And then if you have a way to polish it, that is the best thing that's really gonna finish it off and make it look shinier, kind of like this. Um, without polishing it, it will look like this. So it will still be shiny, it will look like metal but it won't look as uh, delicate and pretty and shiny as silver does, like this. So polishing it would really, really help this out. Um, I don't have a polisher here that I use, so I would take this to my local jeweler um, workshop that I go to and I would just use their polisher. Or if you have a copper brush and some Dawn soap, um, dish soap, uh, that really helps uh, make this shine better. Um, other ways to do that is to get like a tumbler and throw it in a tumbler and that will polish it really well. Um, but really you just wanna polish it, buff it, and it will look beautiful. I've already put this on an earring holder 
Um, this is one of the pieces. I wanted to, so I've already finished this one. Let me go ahead and finish the other one and I'll show you what it looks at the end. Okay, so now I have sanded them both. Um, this one actually ended up getting a bit of a, I don't know if you can see that, but it has a little crack in the clay right there. And that just happens. Um, probably when I was rolling out the clay, there was a mark in the clay and then it cut through the mark and the mark is now forever in my earring, but that's okay because I really like the handmade kind of look to these. Um, that's why I didn't really go hard on trying to make sure anything was super straight. Um, and yeah, um, these are gonna look really nice once they're polished and buffed. Um, for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off the earrings. So that's it. I just finished both of the earrings. Um, so that took like, I don't know, half a day for everything. Um, but I mean, we started with literally a drawing. So I mean, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, but that's really it. Um, I attached the earrings, the ear holders, kind of janky, so just, you know, there's better ways to do that. Um, and I'll polish it sometime this week so that it looks really nice. And I cannot get this through my other ear. So I just made earrings that I cannot even wear, which is just great. Um, but if I could wear them, I would look, I would look so classy and so nice, but I can only wear one. So we're just gonna go with that. Um, thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of these types of videos. I don't know what I'm going to be making next, um, so I don't know when that's going to be. And, but it'll be fun, whatever it is. It'll be entertaining. And I hope you enjoyed um, learning how to make these. Literally anyone can do it. I hope I explained it well enough that you could just go out, get the stuff that you need, and make the exact same thing. Um, it really does not cost very much. You could do this with bronze and it will look really, really similar. I used silver so that it could be, I don't know, for me, I just really like silver jewelry and it just seems nicer and it's more of like a keepsake. And I just, I just hope sometime in the future, if I have kids, they'll be like, and they have kids, and they'll see my jewelry and they'll be like, oh, Grandma Casey made that and we gotta, we gotta keep it forever because Grandma Casey made it and it's silver, so don't, don't lose it. So that's why I made it out of silver. <laughs> um, but you can make it out of copper, you can make it out of bronze. They make metal clay, all different types, and I'll list them down below. Um, but if you wanna make silver like me, this is exactly how you do it. And you can get that 50 grams worth for $100. We did not use nearly like any of it and you can rehydrate all of the dry clay that we got from it. Um, so it just literally just becomes a lump of clay again and you can just start again. So maybe $30, um, who knows? Just 
definitely not a hundred dollars worth but yeah I think they look really nice and um, it's a really fun hobby to have honestly you can literally make whatever you want you can even make rings um, the clay shrinks about 15% so you have to kind of size up a certain amount to make a ring with it but you can literally make anything it is so fun so I hope you had fun watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Zero. Do you like my jewelry? Do you like it? Want it?